This episode of Broken Bones and Bullshit is sponsored by Ozcan Rural. Well, Will Purcell, welcome on. Mr. Burnett, the <laughs> boxing bull rider. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did the whole rodeo start for yourself? No, oh, see, as a young boy, like you're always trying stuff out. So, the local rodeo come along, Mary Rodeo, local steer ride. Yeah. Me and me brothers, let's go. Because <laughs> um, we actually found some old photos of Dad, and he was throwing the old peg legs at a local <laughs> steers himself. So <laughs> we're keen on that. And then, um, yeah, we sort of, we stuck with that for a bit. Another phase, something to try. And then, um, well, we actually had some adjustment cattle on Dad's property. Shout out to old Barb Hearn. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Mate, we used to buck them crossbreds all day long. <laughs> we, <laughs> Did you yeah. have a shoot or? We didn't have a shoot. We had a race with a gate at the end <laughs> and two loops of rope. We used to put a bit of pole in behind them and then um, let them out there. It was a downhill slope. And if you <laughs> made it that far, there was a concrete trough at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> so you had to hold on tight for that bit. <laughs> uh, oh, it was just all bad. There was a bit of railway iron on the corner and we'd always just fly the gate open and They'd always take your knee out on that. So we solved that. We put a bit of padding on there. <laughs> so that wasn't so bad. <laughs> but yeah, and army brothers, that, they did it for a little bit. Then uh, one of my brothers, Scotty, he went bullfighting. Youngest one stopped. I, I loved it, mate. Like, didn't have any talent at it, but there's <laughs> something about it. I just loved it. So yeah, kept on. <laughs> and uh, Scotty started breeding a couple of bulls too for yeah, a while? Yeah, he went from bullfighting to breeding. Uh, we had a heap of bulls at minute. Oh, we had like 10 or so bucking bulls I used to have for practice bulls. Yeah, and, cool. Mate, it, it was a nightmare. Like dad's place wasn't <laughs> fenced properly. And, uh, yeah, there was just, there was bulls causing chaos everywhere. They were in the <laughs> neighbors, they were up the bush, bloody <laughs> shit everywhere. So yeah, I, I know all about that. You would. <laughs> I think anyone with bucking bulls probably <laughs> yeah. knows a bit about that anyways. <laughs> Yeah, the first phone call is always the worst. And then after a few years, it's just like, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course they are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. None of the cows have there. been joined. So, oh, yeah, of course you'd jump the fence. Yeah. Then a year later, our <laughs> uncle would call. He's got black cattle and there'd be one with floppy, floppy ears. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? Yeah, I had an adjustment property and um, I've lost it now due to um, the cattle <laughs> jumping. And it was registered Angus stud, oh. big dollars, like $80,000 bull or something in there. And then, um, yeah, two brown calves. <laughs> <laughs> big horns. <laughs> yeah, come about a month early. Oh, Jesus so Christ. He was, he was wrapped. Yep. Yeah. I was, yeah, it's hard I was... to explain too. <laughs> yeah. There's no explaining. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like, it's it's not my fault all your cattle are being sluts pushing their ass I up know. against the yeah, fence. You should have seen what they were doing. <laughs> it's unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Like if it was, if you were in his position, you would have done the same thing. I'd be shooting him. <laughs> I would now. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, we tried that for a bit and it was good. It sort of helped me get to where I was, but man, I was glad to sell him. <laughs> Jeez, I was so happy. <laughs> now you just happy to go to other people's places and practice. Yeah, yeah, come here or just, yeah, someone else can stress their little hearts out about <laughs> yeah. it, not me. <laughs> Yeah, I think everyone that rodeos needs to own bulls for at least a couple of years because then you'll be so thankful for everyone that oh, you yeah. go to because you realize <laughs> the amount of work. Like, it's so hard. It's so yeah. expensive. <laughs> yeah, and there's oh. no money in it. And they wreck everything and you're always out fixing something <laughs> in the middle of the night or the rain or, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave that one to you, Ben. <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> so you started at the local steroid and then... Then what was the steps from there? You never stopped as soon as, as soon as you started? Yeah, you never really stopped, like other than injuries. But yeah, we went on doing the steer riding. Um, and then eventually I got on a bull, maybe a couple of years down the track, got on my first bull at the Mary <laughs> Rodeo again. Oh, cool. In the novice? In the novice. And um, I think it was just, it was a little poly bull. I think they called it a slug or something. Some <laughs> people might know. But um, he wasn't a big bull, but... I'd never been on anything with a neck and shoulders. Before. <laughs> yeah. I was bloody <laughs> shaking. Beside myself. And, um, yeah, I got one jumped off that. And I got up, 
that was fucking awesome. <laughs> so um, yeah, ever since then, I just that was it. Yeah, bull riding it is. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you been riding for now? Like big bulls. Mm, I probably got on that first big bull when I was fifteen. Thirty now. So yeah, but getting, th- getting there might have been a year between that and actually going off bull riding at the start. Yeah. and I guess yeah. Did you do any other sports before bull riding or? Yeah, yeah. So funny enough, I started out skateboarding as a young fella. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really you look cool. like a skeg. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, hat backwards, let's go. But, um, that kind of eventuated into snowboarding because we live at the bottom of Mount Buller. Yeah. So that was there for us. And I love snowboarding and um, I had natural talent at snowboarding and I, I started getting good at it. But yeah, as soon as bull riding come along, just I, I was gonna, in my head, I was going to be, when I was young, the first pro snowboarder, pro bull rider, but <laughs> eventually it just phased out. <laughs> you realize uh, to get to that elite level, you can't do both. You can't. No, no way. <laughs> like... uh, even at the lowest level, I was, I was trying to ride bulls for so long. Mate. I just didn't, I didn't get it. I, I sucked so bad at it. <laughs> And uh, that took everything in me, and I, I still couldn't get a score. So, like, how's it going to juggle both? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it's like when you start, so hard. So, it's um, what was your first bit of success? You said like it started off pretty tough for you when you're trying to learn to ride bulls. When, when was the first sort of you started feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm figuring this out? Oh, years before I thought I was figuring it out. <laughs> I probably rodeoed for a year and a half. Doing all of them. Like, mm. we went to everything. Me and Wade and Michelle, like, he was starting out bullfighting, so we just went. Like, he was keen to go to everything. We drove everywhere. But um, probably did that for a year and a half, and it would near bring me to tears sometimes. Like, <laughs> you go out and see a Rui get on their first bull and, and ride it. And I'm, I'm pouring my guts out into this. And I, <laughs> yeah, I can't trying to. Oh, yeah. putting so much work. But the first bull I ever rode, this is my theory. I'll get on open bulls as well because I can get on twice as many bulls then. <laughs> yeah. But the first one I ever covered was an open bull, and I won the fucking, excuse me, won the bull ride. <laughs> and, mate, that was that was the best thing that happened to me. That was the best <laughs> thing in my life. <laughs> and um, I, I won a bit of money. And I was just <laughs> so happy about that. And then it cost later, you 20 grand to get that thousand. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. it did. but later that night, I thought it got even better. This old lady was just hassling me. She wanted to buy the shirt off me back. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm selling her just an old Western shirt for 150 bucks. <laughs> yeah, can't, can't lose. Old or whatever it was, mate. Oh, I just, I was on top of the world. <laughs> this is it. This yeah. is radio, boys. <laughs> and so then you won that show and then what was it? 16, 17, you started really sort of figuring it out? Oh, nah, nah. I, did, I didn't figure it out for so long. I, yeah. I, I had a bit of success there. Maybe rode one in a blue moon. I was riding them in practice. I was riding good in practice, but I just couldn't put it together at rodeos. And then, oh, yeah, mate. It took me years. Mm. Yeah, I just had no talent. Yeah. No talent. But um, one thing is I, I wouldn't quit either. Yeah. Like just something about it just pissed me off. <laughs> yeah. So every time we get on practice balls, we'd be getting on eight or ten or mm. like, I, could, I couldn't dream of that now. <laughs> when you're young, you can. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just, yeah. It took you bounce so back then. You bounce like hell. <laughs> God. Now we just slop. <laughs> yeah, and break. <laughs> we we mould into the ground somewhat, and sometimes <laughs> some of us just stays there. <laughs> when my body thinks about hitting the ground, something breaks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not so fun when you're old. <laughs> yeah. yeah, starting at 28 makes it tough. It does, Yeah. <laughs> It's got, it's got its good and bad points. Yeah. Like mentally. It's yeah. The maturity helps so much mm. better. But and So it, was, it took you a long time. And then once you sort of started figuring out like what you would, what age do you reckon you would be like? Hmm. I'd, I'd have to have a good think, but yeah, probably, I don't know. I think I decided by the time I was 18 that I want to be a bull rider. I don't yeah. want to work anymore. Like, we, I grew up around a family of hard workers. Like everyone around me worked hard, but there was something about me that just wanted to get away from that for a bit and just work hard towards bull riding. Yeah. Like that was my goal. I, did, mm. I didn't want to work. I wanted to be a pro bull rider. Let's do it. <laughs> so maybe, maybe 18 or 19. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And then um, 
I think I was 19 years old and I quit drinking, full stop. Mm. Haven't had a drop since because of that. Yeah. Dedicated myself. Like, I mean, that was for bull riding? Yeah, that was for bull riding. Yeah. I think I used to watch an old Ty Murray DVD or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. you probably know the one where he does the gymnastics and that. And <laughs> you saw how dedicated he was. Like, yeah, shit, that's what we got to do. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Anything I thought could have given me somewhat an, of an edge, I'll take it. Yeah. Yep. I started breaking horses for a job just because I could get on something moving. Yeah. I didn't really like horses, but <laughs> <laughs> I was, was breaking in horses for like a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I enjoyed that, but yeah, yeah. it's so weird. And uh, where you, so you've, um, when was your first sort of like title, even like a Southern Cross title? When was the first bit of success? That mm. you had like in sort of title wise. Title wise, but it probably was a Southern Cross one. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what year or what mm. age. Don't yeah. pay too much attention. But um, was it early on? Nah, nah. I think it was probably the the year I went to Canada. I think because by the time I went to Canada, I still hadn't won a buckle, <laughs> and all I wanted to do was win a buckle. <laughs> for God's sake, like, <laughs> you know, like, you, you try so hard that it doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. And then the shows you win, they don't hand out buckles. They don't, actually, I've got a funny yarn. I've won, I'd won two buckles. I think I went to Burrellum. They had a rodeo and they advertised, we've got a buckle. Like, <laughs> come on, bull rides, 800 bucks in a buckle. <laughs> yes, let's go to that one. <laughs> yeah. I end up winning it. Yes, finally got a buckle. And they come out. It's a bloody RM Williams buckle from the shop. <laughs> no. <laughs> So same bloke messages me, oh, you're going to come back next year? It's like, yeah, 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 I'll see what, see what I'm up to. It's like, oh, we, we've actually got a good buckle this year, mate, like, just so you know. Yeah, it's All Harriet. Right. <laughs> right, I'll come. <laughs> Bugger me dead if I didn't win it again. <laughs> and it's a nice, maybe a $100 R.M. Williams buckle. <laughs> Not going back here again. <laughs> yeah, Jesus fuck this Christ. guy. Yeah. My little brother sold him at Denny Ute Master. <laughs> it so would have think, made a fortune. Yeah, we made good money. <laughs> yeah, my brother won this in the bull ride. Do you want to buy it? <laughs> Sweet. That's the same one I could buy at the shop for 40 bucks. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, my first buck will come in Canada, and then I think that, like, you get that first one off your back, they all start coming. Yeah. Yeah. So what year you went to Canada? I think it was 2015. Yeah. Yeah. And how long did you stay over there for? I think the first year would have been six or eight months. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. And we had a great crew. Like, I think there was, there was four of us and uh, what we called our manager. He, he was a blow and He didn't ride bulls, but when we <laughs> went to the bar, we told everyone that was our manager. <laughs> <laughs> so we all won. But um, oh, I can't even remember what you said. Uh, so, TTE, mate. yeah, you were in... Um... So you're in Canada, and then who were you traveling with in Canada the first time? So that first year, I went with Cody Teese, Rowan Markham, and um, Rick Morrison. Rick's one of my best mates still. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And, oh, mate, we just, we lived it. We we had this tiny little apartment in Sylvan Lake. You, It, it was so small, mate. It was like <laughs> a one-bedroom apartment. We had air mattresses everywhere, sleeping <laughs> bags. Like, we all just... There was too much, too much testosterone in one bedroom. <laughs> the nothing. smell would have been great. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> but um, our seats in the lounge room, they were seats that we pulled out of the minivan and we had like a, a 44 gallon drum for a barrel in there and a couch with one cushion we picked up off the side of the road. <laughs> Mate, it was just, it was so good. It was so bad, but so good. And uh, you just lived like that for eight months? We lived like that for a while and then two of the boys, I think they're having a tough time. So they got jobs and where they got jobs, they supplied us all with a house. Oh, so awesome. we moved to this really cool <laughs> like house, <laughs> two story house. Stepping up in the world. Yeah. So yeah, that was pretty fun. That place. So we just rodeoed out of there. We all bought minivans too. <laughs> we thought that was so good. <laughs> thought we were so cool in them. But, um, Man, we always, it was just always food fights on the road and like <laughs> one person would pull up to a red light and you just, you'd nudge up to him gently and then just oh, <laughs> pour him out into the bloody traffic. And, oh, it's just like bumper car rallies 24 <laughs> seven, but in minivans, <laughs> race so, them around bloody, yeah. So you ran a fuck. Yeah. 
<laughs> Politely, yes. <laughs> We're more you, menace to ourselves than everyone else. You, you're pretty rough on vehicles. I've seen that little <laughs> laser you, <laughs> you jumped. La oh, my little that, fiesta. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's that um that time I jumped me work, you. I don't <laughs> yeah. know why I did that, but you've probably seen that. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm glad you don't drink because you're silly enough with some of the shit oh, you do. I know. I think back to some of that stuff and I just shake my head. <laughs> Must have had too much money back then. No. <laughs> just no, no sense. No dollars, no cents. <laughs> God. So we, you said you had some success in Canada. Was that the first trip or your second trip? First trip, to me, it was successful because, like, that's the big bad world. We, were, we didn't know anything about it. We didn't really know people that had done much there. Like, there's people you know of, but we didn't personally know anyone. Mm. So it was also foreign. So... I don't know, it took us a while to get used to them bulls because they buck a little different. Mm. But once we did... Are like, they similar to the States or...? Yeah, like they're all bucking under themselves. And like in Australia, we ride so far forward. Mm. We were just getting face full of horns all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, God, we were just falling <laughs> over the front of everything. <laughs> so, yeah, once we worked that out, like we were all winning events and just having fun. Like, oh, awesome. Didn't even have to think about working. Mm. It's just There was plenty of money. But I, I don't know, I might have got up to fifth in the standings with Bull Riders Canada that year. So it's like, right, that's me goal for next year. <laughs> and you you made finals that year? Made the finals, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And did you ride good at the finals? Can't remember. No. Probably not. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't remember, it can't have been that yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't reckon I did. But, um, and how long was it between um, your first trip and then your second trip back to Canada? Come back for five or six months. Oh, yeah. So you just went in the summer pretty yeah, much. Summer, yeah, summer, 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 summer. <laughs> Excuse me. It was it was so good. Yeah, just loved it. But, um. Yeah, so that second trip, is that when you won the title, like the yeah, Canadian? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that Bull Riders Canada is, is a great association. Like, it's just built by good people. There's a heap of bull riders, and, and they're all getting scores. Like, we're like, holy hell. So, um. Once I had a bit of success that first year, I thought, well, that's my goal. I want to try and win this next year, dedicate to that. And um, I ended up, I didn't have a great year, but you could double and triple enter some of those events. <laughs> and I don't think I was the best bull rider that year that I won the title, but I was definitely the toughest because yeah. I was double, triple entering every event. <laughs> I was injured. God, I was so injured. <laughs> I pushed hard. And um, I think that's really what I, the only thing that got me the win. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So it's uh, if you just did it normally, you probably wouldn't have been able to win it. Probably not. No. No, no just. So was there eventual coming like third and first or something to yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah bloody, yeah. Like there's plenty of success along the way. Mm. But, um, If I could only single enter all year long, I wouldn't have won it. Yeah. I don't reckon. Yeah, awesome. Well, I wouldn't have because it come down to like bugger all points in the end. <laughs> and I, I thought I lost it. It was so shit. My very last bull, I think I rode me first two or three bulls or whatever it was at finals. And then the very last one, my spur hung to the flank. Oh. And you know how bad that can get. <laughs> yeah. And um, I just remember looking up, seeing feet come down and it just, my shoulders were dislocating like so <laughs> easy. Like I'd sneeze and they'd come in. <laughs> And yeah, it come out already and then the feet come down on top of it and oh, punched me out of there. <laughs> so um, I'm out the back. I actually fainted from the pain. I've never done that before. Oh, wow. And um, I think Cody Coverchuck, we were sort of neck and neck coming into finals and he rode his last bull. So I was like, oh, well, I lost that. I was more worried about what was going on. With the arm. <laughs> yeah. And then um, they're like, oh, you won it. You're going to come out the front. I was like, no, Cody would have. No, no, you won it. Oh shit. <laughs> so I drug myself out. There's a funny photo somewhere. My shoulders down here. The shit <laughs> broken all through it. And I have to go out the front. They got all the fireworks and the, <laughs> oh, the cool. speech and the buckles and oh god. I'm so happy. <laughs> this is the best day of my life. I have to go to hospital. <laughs> so, it was how was how was that feeling with like Knowing how hard you worked, like with, as you said, out of your own words, like no talent at all riding bulls at the start, to actually have some success, especially, 
overseas. It was that like sort of feeling when it actually sunk in. Probably sunk in a few days later, but man, I, I thought I was so happy. God, yeah. You can't explain it. Like that's what keeps us hooked, those moments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was just crazy. Like I didn't believe it for a while, but when it did sink in, I was like, shit, well, maybe – Maybe I want to be a world champ. Maybe I actually have what it takes. Yeah. So maybe, maybe it's once possible. you achieve that, then you could reset your goals Step a bit up. higher. Yep. Mm. Yep. That's yeah. I've achieved that now. Let's let's go again. What's and next? Was was Australian title always on your radar? Nope. No. Nah. Not till then. Yeah. But um, it was funny because I thought, oh, it was one of them years where not many blokes won much money in the APRA in the bull ride. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'll come home. I'll just win a title. Mm. And uh, that year, I think everyone had the same thoughts because it didn't go like that at all. <laughs> and it was a tough year with some tough bull riders. And, oh, hell, once I'd set that goal, I had to go for it. Yeah. So it was the same thing, mate, just a grueling season. <laughs> just everything you got. Yeah. And you were just hitting everything? Yeah, everything. Yeah. I set out in that little Ford Fiesta, mate, and <laughs> I think I was home for two months that year. Oh, wow. Yeah, on the road all year long. Mm. Had a break in winter or whatever it was. Went to Canada for two months. Just stay riding fit, stay on top. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Oh, I wish I knew how many bulls I got on that year. <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds? <laughs> Too many, yeah. It was so many. It was crazy. But, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad I did all that stuff. Cause... And that, uh, that year you said it uh, in Australia, that was the year you won it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That was him. What was that? 2019. Yep. Yeah. And then that was, so you won, did you win the tour and pro and the title? Yeah. Won the tour and pro by a long shot. And yeah. The title was almost a bloody like unbeatable. Yeah. But, um, I, I think I still had a good finals too. Like I only <laughs> bucked off a bull, but, um, yeah, mate, that, that title meant probably more to me than the bull riders Canada one or anything. Cause it was the same thing, mate. I knew, that I worked so hard for it. Mm. And there was a lot of bad times in between those two titles with injuries and like things not going well. So when you've really worked for something and you, you've seen the low points. Yeah, it means more. It means so much more. Mm. And that was like that. Like, it was such a relief. And you know that like you can't just fluke it. They can't no. like, not like just winning a show where you can just hang rattle one and then everyone falls off. Yeah, that's you right. You can't win a, the tour and pro or a title unless you're riding good and, and going everywhere. Yeah, some of them smart asses can. Like, <laughs> them blokes, <laughs> they just go out and they just win them big money. Like, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're so good and like, ah, I wish I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I probably wouldn't want to win a title like that anyways. I'd, yeah. I'd rather give everything I've got. Mm. doesn't matter if you're far in front or cutting down to the line, just knowing that you poured your heart into it and mm. it worked out. Yo, that's, that's pretty special. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that next year, did you have a lot of success or? I can't remember to be honest. W when was the second time you won the tour and pro? Yeah, maybe 2022. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I only just won that one too. And was that? That COVID or just after COVID? Just after. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm so bad at putting things on a timeline. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Yeah, there was a bit of space with all that COVID stuff yeah. too, eh? Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. So you won the title and then COVID probably would have hit, yeah? Yeah, I won the title. Mm. Had a heap of heat going into the next events. Like, I was riding so good. Like, probably at my best right after that title. And then they shut it down. On. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah, because we had a little bit of a start of a season and then the whole world just shut down. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then um, one of the boys, I don't know if you're in that thing, but um, started up a virtual bull ride. Yeah, concert. yeah, I was doing that. It was great. It was really cool. And so how that worked is um, we all had to get a code. Like they'd send you the code at the start of the week. You had a week to get on as many bulls as you want. And then send in your best ones. Send in the best ride mm. and they score them like a bull ride. And <laughs> that was so fun. It like, was cool, it was eh? so great. Very and, proactive. And it was sort of like, uh, it was motivation. Like, and then I was, and everyone was like, it was, because we're all bull riders, so I love seeing bull rides. So it was cool to like, get to watch everyone's rides too. So That's right. And everyone was getting on good stuff too. Like, <laughs> yeah. we're not going to play it safe in practice. We're going to win a bull ride. <laughs> yeah. like, run that one in. <laughs> and because we're... Like everyone's just getting on bulls and there's like one other person there because we're all like locked down in COVID. <laughs> so it's like everything's on the hush-hush and 
<laughs> that, and oh. all the bulls are fresh because there's been no rodeo. So yep. it was a crazy time. Jesus. I, I remember one of your videos, you had the um, code written on your ass cheek or something. Oh yeah. There was a bit more going on than that. <laughs> um, I got on, I got on a bull at Ben Reader's place. There was a bloke on the back of the shoot with a, I don't know, like a six shot shotgun. There was a, <laughs> Ben was about bullfighting in one of those sumo suits. There was another guy wearing no pants and chaps and he had an electric guitar. So <laughs> and he smashed it. I went out, row me bull. And then they're all Yahoo. There's another bloke with an ax and a, what's that, that fishing guy that does oh, the yeah. He had that mask on. And um, yeah, it was just, as soon as I got off, there was just chaos. This guitar's <laughs> getting smashed. <laughs> and Made it into a show. What's that? Made it into a full spectacle. Yeah, we're putting it on for the boys. <laughs> and I had the coat on my ass, so I had to run up to the camera and fucking <laughs> Pull your pants show me bum. <laughs> <laughs> your parents would be proud. I don't think they've seen it. <laughs> they wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you would have put them through hell. Yeah, they were victims of a couple of pranks. Yeah. <laughs> Poor things. There was, um, speaking of the Purcells, like you're pretty rich sort of like, uh, there's a lot of you up through the hills and that. like. Yeah. Because I see it, uh, I went to the hunt club and they've got like pretty much a shrine to the Purcells. Like <laughs> the, what's them races they do with like the wild horse oh, race? Or... I forget what they're called. Yeah, it's like the bloody... Man from Snowy River Race. Or yeah. yeah. And then I was like, first, second, and third, Purcell, Purcell, Purcell. Yeah, <laughs> dad, like... my uncle, my bloody other uncle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's a cool place. but So he's like, you've just always been up there? like. I think our family was one of the, like, the big settling families. Mm. So related to everyone. Everyone knows who you are. You don't know them. <laughs> they know who you are. So. When we were young, we really had to check with dad, like if we were getting a girlfriend or something. <laughs> there was every chance it's be related. not your cousin. Yeah, yet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that good. <laughs> a fair, fair bit of that would happen up the mountain, wouldn't it? No, no. Maybe in Bendigo, but not up our way. Not in Muscry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think you have a girl here, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, just me mum. Yeah, it doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. You only be on that tit for six months and, That's right. <laughs> and no more. <laughs> <laughs> so you were all cattle farmers or yeah, yeah, it's cattle country there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, eventually like as things progress, people got sheep too, I think. Mm. I don't know the history that much, but Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you don't know about like your settling family or No, nah, I didn't <laughs> even try, mate. <laughs> It's Just go to the hunt club. You'll yeah. learn it there. Go to the pub. Go to the go down the street, mate. You'll run into something. Oh, <laughs> oh you're oops, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and would so your old man um, rode a couple of steers. Did you have anyone else in your family that rode you? Yeah, my uncle, my uncle Bo Purcell. He used to ride bulls for a while, and uh, he was he was a pretty good bulldog too. Oh, cool. Yeah, and he did that for a long time. Like had a fair bit of success. Yeah, going off the stories, he did do it for a while. <laughs> Mate, they got some incredible stories. But, um, yeah, the, one of the things we always looked up to when we were kids is there's a big photo of Bo on a bull that's kicking out at the pub. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, so mm. like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. I want a photo like that one day. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. That, that was one of them things we looked up to. Yeah. And, uh, have you got your photo up in there yet? No, or? I never have. No. <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't. I'll just, I couldn't care for it now. Yeah. You do as a kid. But... Being the mayor of Mary Jig, I thought oh. you could. <laughs> mayor of Muskery. <laughs> Risk to say that. Yeah, well, we got a population of 32 people, so <laughs> I don't have a lot to control. That's true. <laughs> a couple of sheep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's only one thing dumber than sheep, and that's people that own them. So. Yeah. <laughs> trying to manage all them around here makes it hard. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like, because when I first went to the hunt club, because I'd only met you, like, through rodeo and stuff, and yep. then I went there, I'm like, fucking Purcell everywhere. Oh, I was yeah, like, like a Geez. plague. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Like, Purcell's, Lovick's, McCormick's. Like, there, there's a few families, mate, and they're just Oh, everywhere. it's, like, three or four main families. Yeah, maybe five or six, but, mm. yeah, everywhere. And you all still live up there or did a lot of you move away? No, like there's a lot of people still there, but it's 
it's lost its essence, that place. Like, yeah. everything's been subdivided. We've got Melbourne wankers everywhere <laughs> buying these lifestyle blocks. There used to be farms. Like, everyone had, like, a, a small farm or a decent farm, you know, like, when we were kids even. And when I was a teenager even. But now it's just, like... Holiday houses. There's and... so many rich people. Like, <laughs> like, but it's bound to happen. It's such a beautiful place. Like, yeah. We have rivers, lakes, mountains, but... Like, so you reckon you got the sort of last years of it being sort of a bit more pure before it yeah, got commercialized and, I reckon, and like, ruined? As I was a kid, it was it was such a great place. Yeah, always thought I'm going to live here forever, but I'm not too sure now. I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll live there. Like, yeah, it won't be my the whole feeling place. of the place has changed. Yeah, it sucks. Because yeah, didn't you? The old man sold a block, and then they like built like a chopper pad or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, shit there, <laughs> it's a lot of money. Oh, if I had a dollar for every chopper and marriage jig, mate, like <laughs> you crazy. need to learn how to fly them. No, <laughs> I just work for these people, and that's the best. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's the best. There, there's some great people too. Like I shouldn't say Melbourne Wayne because there's some beautiful people come up. But um, yeah, it just it gets under my skin a bit that. Yeah. We've lost marriage. Yeah, it's, much. it's all changed it's now. It's not the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, all them play, like all them really nice, naturally beautiful places like Torquay or they just... They one, smash them. Yeah. Yep. And then just ruin it. And then hopefully it goes full circle where they ruin it enough that they all <laughs> leave and then it just comes back and then... <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. You should go there on a long weekend, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like an ant farm. Is it... Busy all year round or only the winter? Winter's the busiest. Winter's hectic. Yeah. But like winter, it's more like your touristy, your Asians, Pakistanis, all that like flat out. <laughs> but in summer, you get more Aussie tourists, jet skis, boats, bloody camping, uh, downhill, all driving. Yeah. yeah, like there's, there's everything around <laughs> us. We get everyone hunting, like all that sort of stuff. Yeah. You get everyone from everywhere. Everyone. There's, there's no quiet time of year, really. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not complaining, mate, because, like, for people who want to work, there's work everywhere. There's so much work. They're creating so much work for us. Yeah. Building all these houses, all that sort of stuff. Speaking of work, you've uh, started actually working now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was pretty lucky. I don't think I worked a job for six years. Wow. Yeah. Just bull run. <laughs> but, um, yeah, when I, when I actually started my own business, like, no one could believe it. <laughs> Always had a work ethic, but I didn't actually want to work a job. <laughs> so, yeah, we're fencing now. <laughs> <laughs> and you started that probably around the COVID time, yeah? Exactly when. Mm. Yeah. Because bull riding wound back. What am I going to do? Mm. All right. Now's a good time. I know how to fence. I've done that forever. So, yeah. Let's try to do something. With and this. that's that's been working out for you? Really well. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. It's funny in rodeo, you can, if you're looking for a fencer, go uh, see the bull riders. Yeah. If you're looking for a farrier, go and see like Saddle Bronc or Bareback. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny, eh? Because for rodeo, I've gained so many people helping me out, like so many laborers. And oh, stuff. cool. Well, you're heaps of bull riders. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to tell them, no, you can't go this on the weekend. Mm. It's perfect. <laughs> Let's go work for Will. So they just hand out resumes in the second div. <laughs> trying to get pension I should, jobs. yeah. <laughs> I haven't, but I should. <laughs> see who's just started and then see if they're any good. Yeah, mate. The only thing I can't offer is a place to stay just because we're renting. But I reckon <laughs> if, you, if you had that place to stay, you could have. It would be, and if you still had bulls too, it would have been perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Flog them all day and then smash them at night. That's right. <laughs> they wouldn't recover. <laughs> it was... Um, the, the old saying, like, I don't uh, I don't work out, I just work. Is that what you're doing now with your bull rod? There's something to be said for that because mm. I think now like, I'm the strongest I've ever been and the fittest. When we were keen on bull riding, we, I went through a phase where we are in the gym every day, like anything to get better, stronger, bloody, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But um, nah, now I'm working fit. I reckon I'm way fitter than I ever was doing all that stuff. Work yeah, out. wow. Because, like, you're doing it for – 10, 12 hours a day. You're, yeah. you're, you're moving. You're doing <laughs> stuff like your body's more supposed to do rather than <laughs> bench pressing and bloody. Like, yeah, bar with yeah, It's not it. natural, is it? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I reckon that's why I used to dislocate my shoulders so much was too much gym stuff. Like, yeah, wow. Getting bloody, 
yeah, too bulky sort of thing almost. And it was it was you that was telling me about like um you don't do a lot of stretching and that. Do no that? stretching. No. Did when I started out, but um I don't know if someone told me or I just come across it, but I stopped stretching and I stopped pulling muscles. Yeah, wow. Well. Yep. Simple as that. Mm. And it makes sense now. Like you got a rubber band, you keep stretching that, stretching that. Like it's it's brittle and it's it's flogged out. Like we need strength. Yeah. We, we need to be able to, like, we need that flex too. And what do you do for your soreness if, you, if you're not doing any stretching or that? Do you have, like, a recovery sort of? It was more, more a good warm-up, I yeah. found. A good warm-up. Yeah. Being bull fit, there's not much more you can do. Like, obviously yeah. riding horses during the week. Or, mm. But I found gym stuff didn't help me at all. Yeah. Tried it. Wasn't for me. And then when you're getting on bulls, you just get your body warm, not get stretch. warm. Yeah, go yeah. for a run, get loose, bloody. Mm. Yeah, get the blood pumping. Mm. Feels heaps different. It's <laughs> yeah. better. <laughs> <laughs> and and, that, and that's worked for you. It's worked for me. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you are sore, like that takes the edge off it. Because mm. like the like when you're sore and you're getting on again, the last thing you want to do is go moving around because <laughs> you're so stiff. Have you ever got into like saunas and ice baths and all that stuff? Yeah, done all that. Yeah. And then trails. Same thing. I, I didn't get much out of it. Yeah. I think it was more for placebo. Mm. But, um, yeah. I've been, uh, I've been doing the saunas and I, I like it mainly in winter, just do them in the morning, just warm my body up, like yep. all my injuries and all that. It <laughs> just helps me, like, Body move a bit more because it takes a while to get going in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Thirty, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm thirty three now, so yikes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, and then I had like fourteen surgeries or something. So oh man, <laughs> she gets a bit stiff. Yeah. Are you, are you in pain when you sleep and stuff? <laughs> no, I've never really had pain, but like when it's when we're getting these like minus two with them frosts and. If you're out in it and everything gets cold, like all me plates and stuff, I can actually feel it. Yep. Gets cold and. Or a weather change coming. Yeah. Yeah. You just get all stiff and, and me hands are probably the worst. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They just, yeah, get so stiff and, and like sort of like claw up. Just, I don't know. Yeah. Because right. I've broken like so many times. I heard a good remedy for that actually. It's labouring. <laughs> <laughs> For 20 bucks an hour. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Up Marriage Hills. Yeah, for some reason, it works. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll stick to tattooing. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I'd kill to be on that tattooing money. <laughs> <laughs> I want that fencing money. Yeah, you wish. <laughs> <laughs> and, but not the labour and fencing money. Oh, That's shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, it depends who it's for. Some people will get more than 20 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you I'll need... have to see if you can move, you know. <laughs> well, nah, I'll take it till 10 o'clock to get going. I don't think you'd give me 18. <laughs> <laughs> you know your worth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a little break and then we'll get back into it. Easy as. Ozcan Rural, providing Southwest Victoria with everything related custom sheep and cattle yards. Get in touch with the fellas via email auscanrule at gmail.com. That's A-U-S, can like the one you drink, rural at gmail.com. Building fences straighter than your local politician. So welcome back. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I heard you're quite the hitchhiker. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, my theory is every time you hitchhike, you are guaranteed a good story. <laughs> and um, looking back now, I, I just don't know why. Like, but geez, you used to hitchhike a lot. Just put yourself in them positions. Well, just rock up to a show with not knowing how you're going to get. Oh, or just um, sometimes not have a way home. Or Yeah. Yeah. God, there, there's so many situations. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we just leave you in the most ridiculous places <laughs> and or or not work out, but yeah. You, so what what's one of your favorite hitchhiking yarns? I've got two ripper yarns. Um pick which one you want first. We've got the, the knife wielding truck driver. I reckon we go with that we'll one. We'll go with that one. <laughs> so our routine, we're in Canada, group of boys had so much fun, but our routine was we go and get on practice bulls at contractors 
And then on the way home, we'd go to Red Deer and go to Billy Bob's Western Bar. It was wet t-shirt night or something, but that was our routine. So um, one night, for whatever reason, the boys all left and I chose to stay. And then um, I was like, oh, well, I'll just hitchhike home the next day. Easy as. <laughs> Wake up the next morning, don't know where I was, but I was in Red Deer somewhere, which it's like, yeah, no worries. Snuck out. <laughs> Let's um let's get to the highway. I know my way home. Got a gear bag and a cowboy hat because I know in Alberta if you've got a cowboy hat on, you've got a good chance of getting picked up. <laughs> I'm gonna be dead if it wasn't like an hour's walk just to get to the highway. <laughs> and all right, stick me thumb out. Let's go. I'm walking up the highway for probably another hour, mate. No one's even looking like picking me up. <laughs> Starting to stress. Like, <laughs> I left at four in the morning. <laughs> and it's like, we're getting a smoko time. And <laughs> so there was a truck stop up there and I just walked in. I was asking the truck drivers. And then um, one bloke waves me over. Here, here, come over, come over here, here. Yeah, right, righto. Sweet as, mate. Like, nice to meet you. Like, where, where are you going? I was like, oh, yeah, um up the highway 42 or whatever like it's just northbound well look, there's only one way to go i'll just get out at this highway yeah 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 and <laughs> then um then i had to sit there and wait for 10 minutes while he cleaned the passenger side seat like oh it's tick. filthy was it no or? it wasn't filthy but it, it was weird like he was just cleaning it and wiping it and <laughs> i'm just sitting there with my gear bag waiting but <laughs> fingers can't be choosing <laughs> yeah. who cares get in the truck start trying to have a yarn with him and he, I don't know if he was Russian or German or he was German that speak Russian or whatever. And um, we're trying to have this broken conversation. <laughs> and he thought I was from Austria. Like he just couldn't fathom that I was from Australia. <laughs> so, yeah, we're talking about this and that. And, oh, yeah, it's all awkward, as it usually is, hitchhiking. Oh, do, do, you, do you have ISIS in Austria? I was like... Oh yeah, mate, we got ISIS at home. Like, yeah, they, they cause a lot of trouble. And as soon as I said that, he freaking grabbed this knife off the front bloody of the truck, pulled it out. And I never went hitchhiking without a weapon. I had a leather all in my pocket. <laughs> this is a big cabin, like a semi truck. And he's like yelling in Russian and like swinging his knife like this while he's yelling and like <laughs> looking at me. And I've just, you know, when you're in adrenaline mode, you can have a subconscious thought that quick yeah my thought was i'm gonna have to jam this in his neck or something <laughs> and then take the wheel we're doing 120 up the highway and i was shitting myself like bailed up in the back oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> and then he just boom slammed the knife on there white knuckle on the wheel wouldn't say nothing i was like, <laughs> 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 like this leather already mate I, I don't know what's going on now and no one believes this yarn either. It's so <laughs> yeah. unbelievable. But it hasn't changed over the years. And then um, my next thought is, oh, no, I'm, I'm stuck in this truck. Like, yeah. When are you going to get out? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, yeah, he's, he's white knuckle on the wheel. Wouldn't look at me. Wouldn't talk to me. Nothing. Jesus Christ. Coming up to me highway. This is the moment of truth. <laughs> Start slowing down. Right. He stopped. I've grabbed my gear bag and I've got out and I was sort of like, I was so timid. Th thanks, mate. <laughs> Wouldn't even look at me. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> like, it was so weird. I thought I was fighting for my life. And then um, the first car that drives past me is my housemate. Boom. <laughs> out we get out of the truck, straighten with my housemate, off we go home. <laughs> it was so weird. I still can't put my finger on what was wrong with him or what he was saying, but there was a knife that was like eight inches long and it was scary. Did you have like the shakes and that from I the adrenaline? I had the, the shakes adrenaline? the whole trip, mate. Like, yeah. Even when I got out, I was still shaking. Like, <laughs> yeah, wow. Like, like, you can't explain it. It's a complete stranger and you're in a frigging truck. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was pretty crazy, but it's, it's not that believable. But I swear on my mother's life, that's exactly how it went. <laughs> but there was another time... Like, was I, that the first first full on hitchhiking thing or this second first story? Scary thing that happened, yeah. yeah. But um, and then you kept hitchhiking after. I that. did heaps, man, because like <laughs> mate, even after loved that, the stories they were so crazy. Some of the stuff that used to happen, but um, 
I had a lot of dramas with my knee and like I'd, I'd try to ride again and it was still no good. So I'd wait for more months and then I'd try again and I was sitting at home for months and then building bull ropes. I was just sick of life. <laughs> oh, this bull ride. If you want to jump in with us, jump in with the stock contractor. It's um 10 hours north. Like it's freaking on your way to Alaska. <laughs> All right. Jumped in with the contractors. Off we go. I just didn't have a way back. So we went to that bull ride. Went to one more bull ride, then I'm in central Alberta. I've got an eight or a nine hour drive home with no way to get home. <laughs> Righto. We're up at four in the morning again because it gets light then in summer. Like it's yeah. light at four in the morning. <clears throat> All right. Got dropped out on the highway. The people I stay with, they give me a sign that said Mar Wayne or bust. <laughs> I threw that out and upgraded to the old thumbs up. <laughs> First bloke that picks me up. He's like this ball fella. There's this pit bull in the back. <laughs> Jesus, mate. He's like, no, no, don't worry about him. He's fine. Jump in. <laughs> Jesus. Christ. We get to talk and he's telling me how he's in this skinheads gang or something in England. And I don't know what it was, but it sounded bad. <laughs> yeah. And he starts saying, oh, yeah, just got out of jail, this and that. I was like, oh, what were you in jail for? He's like, they thought I murdered someone, but I didn't. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Anyways, yep. Get to the next highway turn off. I'll drop you here, mate. Yep, sweet as. Get out, walk along there for a bit. I've still got my gear bag and my cowboy hat. Like it's. <laughs> did you go to? You can't just run along. It's like it's still heavy. The second guy that picks me up seems like a good fella. He's good to talk to. What do you do, mate? Oh, I'm a sniper for the army. Oh shit! So I'm two for two with killers. <laughs> This is a great start to my morning. And I've got seven hours of driving left. Grouse. But um, yeah, he was good. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Took me a bit further. And then um I had a few somewhat normal people after that. I think there was like seven or eight lifts that by the end of it. But um I was in this area starting to get dark, phones starting to go flat. I was texting someone and I was like, oh I'm at this place, they're like, you know, there's bears in that area, don't you? Nah, and cougars. I was like, oh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <laughs> it was bushland too. Like it was. So all of a sudden, I'm in panic mode, and my phone's nearly flat. So I had to think of a scheme last minute. <laughs> it's like, right, I've downloaded Tinder. Put as my biography. I'm on this highway, 42, heading north. I desperately need a lift. I know there's bears and stuff out here. If you can help me out, my phone's nearly flat. Please don't match. Just call me. This is my number. That was my Tinder <laughs> thing. And did it. I just swiped and swiped and swiped and <laughs> locked the phone, put her away. Walk and walk and walk. It's getting darker. Phone rings. Oh, oh um... Are you on Highway 42 or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, can you see some black horses in the paddock? Yeah, three big black ones. Oh, that's my place. Just wait there. Yes. <laughs> Thank God. And this old car come up, mate. Like, it would have been the kind of car that was cool in the 70s. <laughs> but really not cool now. It was like this old brown like Cadillac or something. Oh, sick. <laughs> and um, there was like glad wrap for a window and um, just <laughs> shit broken everywhere. Anyways, this real weird girl comes and picks me up. Where are you going? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'll, I'll take you all the way home if you buy me dinner. All right, deal. Tim Horton's all right? Yeah, which is like a coffee shop takeaway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much. Like, and we're trying to talk and, mate, all I can hear is <laughs> bloody <laughs> wind coming in the glade wrap. <laughs> and, yeah, no kidding. She drove me all the way home. I think I left at like four in the morning. I got home at 11 or 12 PM. And when we pull up, she leans in for a kiss. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I gotta go. Like, I'm getting a bit tired, I gotta get to bed, but thank you so much, thank you so much. And then um, I go inside, have a shower, get out of the shower. Still, I can see car lights there. So I sort of went to go out thinking, Monty's home, your house, mate. Nah, she's still there. So I shut the door again. Jesus Christ, like she's been in there for like 20 minutes, <laughs> sitting in our driveway still. And she must have saw me and then she just slowly pulls out. Oh no, this can't be over yet. <laughs> well, Baby like, reindeer set up. Oh, it was so, yeah, it was. It was so strange. But, yeah, I couldn't believe I got home. 
They look at me house, mate, but I had to tell him, like, there's a chance this girl may come back. She's not quite right. <laughs> yeah. There's something a bit off. And I go, I had enough killers. And maybe there was another one. <laughs> and we got home. That's what. Uh, Did you see see bears uh, hear them, like, when, when you're walking? In my mind, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't actually. <laughs> yeah. But that's the worst thing because they always tell you, oh, with cougars, um, you don't hit – by the time you see a cougar, it's too late. Oh, wow. So, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but sounds like you nearly got one in the black Cadillac. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was it was not a nice trip. Like, it sucked. <laughs> the whole trip sucked. I was so happy to get home. When you took her out for dinner, she didn't light a candle or something? No, no. <laughs> we just hit the drive through mate. <laughs> it was a good dinner. <laughs> Bloody farmer's rap or some shit. <laughs> so enough about hitchhiking. Yeah. What's, uh, what's the best bull ride you've ever made, you reckon? Mm, hard to say. Maybe, Mr. Um, Fabulous or um, Hillbilly Deluxe? So probably, th- probably Hillbilly, yep. yeah, I reckon. Because they're probably my two standouts that I know of that I've watched yep. you do. The first Fabulous ride? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was fun. But funny enough with Hillbilly... That was probably one of the easiest bull rides I've ever made. You know, Everything was working. You just, now and then you get this moment when you're in the zone and everything just runs smooth. And that was that. And, oh, I loved that ride. It was, it was so fun. I didn't want to get off. Yeah. God. How was the feeling after it? The best. Yeah. Because that was my first 90 point bull ride. I think oh, I was wow. 92. And they just tied for the Australian record on that bull two weeks before. Yeah. Troy yeah, Wilkinson. Troy Wilkerson. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, mate, that, that was a big moment for me. I, I was so happy. <laughs> God, I was happy. <laughs> and then you sort of went on a bit of a run with 90s after that. Yeah, had a few. Yeah. I know Um, I know them 90s at the McPhee shows aren't worth the same, but <laughs> yeah. you take them when you can get them. <laughs> yeah. I think I had two in one night once. But, <laughs> but um, that... That first fabulous ride was worth ninety. Yeah, he, he, that in was person. That really was ranked. back then. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I remember watching that in person, and yeah, that was worth ninety points oh, geez, for sure. That was one of them ones I, I knew it was going to be like that. Like mm. I just I knew I'd, I'd seen that bull a lot, and I don't think he'd been ridden yet, but I just had a feeling it was going to work out. And yeah, it was cool. <laughs> sure as shit. It's um, it's like you figured it out because. He went unridden for a while, then you rode him. Then the next weekend he got rode. He just started getting yeah, flogged. Gets rode all the time. <laughs> yeah. But it's like that though. Like mm. people, if you believe something, it'll it'll happen. Mm. And once people have seen it, yeah, hey, I can do that. Yeah, well, if Will rode him, I can ride him. Yeah, so. and then it's sort of yeah, it's not the boogeyman anymore. No, like oh, this thing's unrideable. It's like nothing's unrideable. You see it all the time mm. with unridden bulls. Yeah. Just it, crack that egg once and then they're just another bull. It's crazy, like, um, the level, like, the finals, just uh, the world finals gone. Some of the bulls there are just incredible, eh? And oh. everyone's sticking on them too. It's crazy. Like, it's. I don't think people understand, if you put a bull like that here in Australia, how that bull looks. Yeah. They're so rank. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> They've probably never seen anything a buck like that. Have you um, rode much in the States? No, nah, I, I really wanted to. Like, that was my next step, but um, they didn't let me in. Was that you overstayed your visa or something? No, nah, I didn't do anything wrong in my eyes, but um, how it worked out is, long story short, they thought I was going to stay down there for good because mm. I had no loans, like no mortgages, no rental history because I'm a bull rider, <laughs> like a gypsy. <laughs> so all I had was an envelope full of cash. Like, they tore the van to bits, held us all up. There was five Canadians in that like car with me, mm. and we are going. We we're just going to three bull rides and coming back. So they didn't let me in then. And then um, after that, you got that big red cross on your name. Oh, you already been flagged. It got mm. real tough. So I was going through lawyers and, like, do, paying all this shit. Mm. And then COVID came, so I just stop that yeah yeah you still got dreams are heading over there probably not now i think no. i don't think my body would handle it now yeah as much as i'd love to yeah what's what sort of what's next for will Purcell? where do you see 
Mm. You still got a few good years left in you, it, you reckon? It's hard to say, mate, because I've had such bad luck these last few years trying to make it work, getting a couple bulls in and getting hurt again, serious injuries. And um, like I told you earlier, I had my first bull back the other day and I yeah, fucked your wrecked shoulder. my shoulder. So mm. I just, I'll get healthy and I'll reassess, but I don't want to leave on these terms. I feel like I, I need to get myself to the top I'm going to quit mm. just for myself. Yeah. But hey, not going to make plans till I'm healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my biggest thing when I've had them big, serious injuries. Everyone's like, oh, surely that's it. I'm like, I can't stop it there. Like, I'm not going to be taken out. Like, I want to leave on my terms. Like, yeah, not a quitter. Yeah. I'll like stop, a, but I won't quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want to like end it on like a big wreck. I'd rather come back, get a few, get riding good, then stop. Yeah. Like I'd yeah I'd hate to just end it on that, but it's it's a crazy how different the sport is because I talk to people and they broke their arm once playing football and they never played again. It's like yeah. it's a broken arm. That's fuck all. Oh, well, six adults, weeks, mate. They'll be they broke their leg when they were twelve and they ah uh, yeah it still hurts me so much. <laughs> yeah, it's like how, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've what? nearly everything. I'm getting around <laughs> just fine. Yeah, speaking of injuries, what's what's your injury list? Ah, uh, like I said, most of them. <laughs> yeah. But um, there's probably one that I haven't had. I haven't had the old Ben Reader special. Like I think I feel like I've broken most things, dislocated, torn ligaments, tendons. But I have never been sexually assaulted by a bull's horn, <laughs> and not many people have. But for some reason, Ben Reader, it's happened a few times. <laughs> I think if we land on our knees, we pucker up, but he, <laughs> he might spread them or something. <laughs> yeah, He's uh, got that dad ass now too. He does, so it's <laughs> even more inviting to <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, everything but that, I reckon. Yeah. So what, what's, name some of your big ones. Like you broke your neck. Yeah, like in one hit, I broke my neck, my back and my tailbone. And I didn't know at the time, I just knew I was in pain and it was at Rocky PBR. That night I slept on a bloody park bench because I didn't organise somewhere to stay. It's like we do. But, um, yeah, it, it took me a while and I was having so much trouble and it still pains me a lot. So it, that probably affects me the most now. But um, otherwise, maybe my foot probably affects me. I sort of crushed everything in that. Oh, wow. Yeah, when I, it was in the shoot. At Rockhampton again. Really? That's why I don't go there anymore. It's It's got a bit of a juju, that place. It does. There's been a lot of people get hurt there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it now, but it, it could just be a mental it's, thing. Uh, it seems like them Rocky guys do good up there, though. It's like yeah, it's good thrive. for them. but the it's, locals thrive. <laughs> yeah, but it's like anyone that flies in, it's like, fucking hold on. Yeah, it's hell. <laughs> yeah, You're going to go to one of the worst hospitals in Australia. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> And it is, <laughs> yeah. but uh, it was cause, um, so that happened in the shoot. I was, I was going to move there. I was, was going to live with Brian Duggan. I think I was there all of a week and, um, oh, we've got this bull. We can't get it out the shoots young yet to prove myself. I'll get it out. Don't worry about it. Boys. I'll get it out. And yeah, just pop, 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 pop. Right. Get off, pull me boot off and the old foot just flopped to the side like a banana. Oh, wow. Like, you're right to get on him. Uh, no, I think you might need to take me to hospital. <laughs> we'll just crush it to bits. Crush the absolute guts out of it. But yeah, um, I end up having four surgeries on that. Wow. Yeah. And that probably gives me the most grief, that mm. foot, just cause, you know, I guess it's a complex thing to break the <laughs> <Yeah>. old foot. <laughs> but, uh, it doesn't work like a foot now. It's like more of a paddle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's mm. crazy. Is, how long, um... After you broke your back and your neck, did you actually go and get checked? I don't know. I was getting on bulls like within the month. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cause I, I and you didn't know. even know about it. I, I knew it was sore. Mm. I just thought it was sore though. But um, maybe a few months later, I went to the chiropractor because it was like, oh, I couldn't sleep or anything. Mm. Maybe they can crack it or something. So there's one of them chiropractors, they take the whole scan of your back. So, oh, so you've done this, this, and this. I'm looking at it like there's a pronger broke off me bloody neck and there's a big thing chip thing off the back and there's another big chip off the tailbone i was like oh and she's like oh that's all right well i can do something for that and she, she pushed on me neck mate and it was crushed. 
<laughs> I couldn't turn my head much, but I couldn't turn it at all for like four weeks after that. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know about your chiropractors anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them, you reckon? Oh, mate, it's cruel. <laughs> that, it was a funny story that happened to me. Like I uh, went to a chiropractor because like I'd just been getting sore and my shoulder was real fucked, but it was all just muscle related. So um, he was like a physiotherapist and chiropractor sort of mix in one. And everybody, like in Bendigo, was swearing by him. So yep. I went there and then he did the same thing, did a scan. And he's like, I told him about, like, oh, I broke my back and stuff. And he's like, oh, yeah, when uh, when did you break your neck? I was like, oh, I haven't broken my neck. He's like, oh, yes, you have. <laughs> and he's like pointing it out. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So I, I don't know when I you did it. You could see it too, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could see, like, the <laughs> sort of calcified like sort of Janelle changes that color in it yeah mm. yeah yeah so i don't know when that happened but <laughs> did they give you the old neck push <laughs> <laughs> no he did the like the floppy neck oh and i didn't like that no nah. i was like yeah you can have this they're the ones you see on instagram <laughs> yeah cracking the hell out old ladies. but then it's it's like a audio cracking sound it's not the actual person's Neck doing it because all you listen oh. to the cracks, all the cracks are the exact same. I didn't pick up on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I watched too much Instagram. <laughs> we all do. Yeah. So, who are some of your biggest influences? Mm, it's probably two that probably influenced my career the most. Uh, one of them was going way back, like before I even thought about bull riding. His name was Craig Mitchell. So, when I used to skateboard, there, there was a group of us in town. We were all skateboarding and weren't taking it serious. Like, we wanted to be pro skaters. And there was a local guy. He had um he had his own brand and business. But um, long story short, he used to take us under his wing, teach us, teach us about sponsorship, fitness, like all this sort of stuff. And, and this was when you were skateboarding? This is when I was skateboarding. Yeah. And then when I moved into snowboarding, that was his forte, mate. Like he just taught work ethic in a sport environment and that's something that I never even knew about like yeah you work at work and then you do sports for fun but mm. like for example when you get to Mount Buller you're at the, the base of the runs he would make us he wouldn't make us but he'd encourage us to walk from the base of the run all the way up to the rail park and you're not snowboarding until you do that and mate that's hard at high altitude <laughs> yeah. but um like He'd do it himself too. Like years later, I saw him. He, you'd always see him in the morning, just walking all the way up, like stuff like that. And yeah, he, he helped us. He he got us sponsors. He sponsored us himself with his brand. And like he just installed such a work ethic in a positive way. I feel like I carried that through for the rest of my life. Even like and I, I still stuff thank he him taught you back then, you've used your whole life. Absolutely. Since then. Mm. Like I think he was probably a big reason why I stopped drinking. Like he smoked himself. But he would never smoke around us kids. Yeah. Like he just, like he was such a good influence, mate. Like all the mums loved him. Like he, <laughs> yeah. he was just a pisser bloke. <laughs> and now, now he coaches skateboarding. Like, oh, like cool. He's just cut out for that stuff. But yeah, yeah. My work ethic in sport, I think, started with him. Mm. Yeah, helped so much. But um, as I got older, I'd say what sort of enforced all that work ethic was my best mate Rick Morrison, because uh. I don't even know how we became mates, but he was just as mad as me on being a world champion. And all we wanted to do was be a world champion. And that's all we lived, like all we breathed. Any decision we made throughout the day was to be a world champion. And uh, he would make you feel so bad. Like some nights you go to a bull ride, like you, you get wrecked. It's late at night, it's 11 o'clock at night. Oh, I think we might just go to Macca's, Rick, like get Macca's for dinner. He's like, mm, yeah, fair enough. I guess that's what a world champ would do. They just put Maccas in their body. <laughs> it's not going well. <laughs> Fuck. All right, I'm going to bed without dinner. Like, <laughs> like man, it, it was so competitive, and we were both like that to each other. But it just got out of control, and we couldn't miss a day at the gym. Like we couldn't. You get a practice, get on six bulls, and get annihilated. <laughs> oh, I think I'm done. Mm. Mustn't want it that bad. <laughs> get on another two like, oh. mate, it was it was the best thing because our mental fortitude was like couldn't be beaten mm. no matter what 
Because like, you've done the work. Some too. of the stuff we put ourselves through pushing each other so hard, you just, you wouldn't do yourself. You, just, <laughs> you really wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't. Man. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to thank Rick for that, mate. Like, he, he was, he pushed me so hard. And um, even when he, he stopped bull running, he gave up on it like a pansy. <laughs> um, yeah, he still, still was there, like, encouraging. And, but, um, yeah, he, it was that bad, mate, that he forced me into winning an eating competition. <laughs> That's how competitive you That's how got. bad it was. Like, we went to this eating competition. Start out, like, they bring you out a bowl of chili. You, you get through that. They bring you the next bowl. And, like, there was 20 people at the table, big boys, little fellas like me, <laughs> all of us. And then a Rick tapped out like a pussy. Huh? <laughs> so then he became my coach. And I think all you won was like 250 bucks <laughs> and your food for free. But I ended up winning it. And oh, like you'd swallow a piece of food and it would just stop there. Like, it's just <laughs> You're so full. I didn't sleep that night. Like, <laughs> so stupid. Like, <laughs> you just couldn't quit at anything. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, thanks to that, I reckon like that got me through some tough times because. Mm. We went through it like we didn't let our minds weaken for a second. Mm. Didn't have a choice. And you you were doing the same back to him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were, we were brutal mm. mate, on each other. But <laughs> we wanted the best for each other too. Yeah. Like we, we both wanted to be world champions. And and you were riding good when you were doing that? Some of it. Like at the start, like we, we were still bull riders trying to make it. Mm. We were like barely getting by like barely had enough for food sometimes and one of us would win and then we'd be right for a bit and then the other one would win and like yeah but it's just <laughs> i love it i really love it <laughs> i miss it what's uh, what's some advice you'd give to a young fella that wants to make a living off riding bulls a young fella in australia i feel like it's so different for us but um i'd say stay away from any sort of like expensive car loans home loans, any sort of big commitments like that. Like you can do that stuff when you're older, but I feel like the biggest falling out for people in Australia is they get into that work lifestyle. Mm. They buy the $60,000 ute that they don't need and they're forever paying off. So they, they can't <coughs> commit to bull riding yeah, because there's too much to lose. Mm. Whereas if you want to make it as a bull rider here, I think you just need to be happy to live with nothing mm. and commit everything. But, um, yeah, that and just you got to be mentally tough. you got to screw your head on and learn everything you can. Yeah. Go to every bull riding school. Learn off any, anyone. Mm. Don't learn off dickheads. Like, make sure they've done something. But, yeah, yeah you've got to just – you can take so much. You can't even take stuff from the dickheads. Like, just a different perspective sometimes. Mm. Just learn, learn, learn. Try, try, try. Don't quit till your head hits the ground. Yeah, cool. Never quit. <laughs> <laughs> or else it could be coming for you. It's amazing some like uh some stuff you could learn learn just randomly. Like I was in Europe like riding bulls and it's uh like they're really trying over there, but they're still a long way off Australia and then even further off America. And um they were doing this had this bull lean and then one of the boys like I oh, just pulled tail up and then just grabs his handle and was able to pull the ball over from having his handle tight yeah. and then got his foot down. I was like, I've never seen anyone do that. Nah. And then, so I do it now since I've seen that. I was like, <laughs> that's so smart. He's yeah. like, just pull it up, just grab the handle, pull the ball over, put his leg down. Crazy. I was like, that's sick. You can't ride anyone off when it comes to learning. Eh? Mm. Like we you might not be, be the too best good. bull rider, but. We have a different perspective, which just might be what you need mm. right then and there. And as soon as you stop learning, then you might as well just stop. Mm. You'll quit. Like, yeah. What's the point? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not fun much. anymore. <laughs> if you know everything, then it's, it wouldn't be fun. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, it's a, I, yet definitely to meet a bull rider that knows everything, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's definitely a humbling sport. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. A little too humbling. <laughs> I think that's why everyone else thinks we're crazy. But yeah, <laughs> it was. Um, so when you won the Australian title, you got a lot of fulfillment from that. Like that was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I did. But I was ready for the next step. And like we're saying, world champion, world champion. So that was a small, small step. And that's why I, I feel like I've somewhat failed my goals as a bull rider so far because that was my goal, mm. and. I, really fell short of that but um, 
Yeah, just <clears throat> you think you've achieved something, you haven't. Look what they're doing over in the states. Like we, we're nothing here. Mm. You, you reach a goal, you go again. Yeah, keep getting better. Why stop now? Why slow? Yeah, and I think that's um, like you hear from a lot of them guys that are uh, even won a world. Then the next year, they nearly not make finals. Some of them because they didn't reset their goal. Like they like. You win, everybody wants to be a world champion. Then you finally do it. You need to be like, reset your goals. Two-time yeah. world champion. It's crazy. Four-time world You need to reset it or otherwise it just swindles off and like you sort of wander lost. That's like, right. And you stop doing all the things that made you a champion because mm. you are the champion now. Like yeah. you're that guy. Mm. I'm not hungry. I'm not bloody spending every waking hour. <laughs> resetting my goals what i did wrong this day what i did right like you like still the chant like it's not so bad maybe. yeah that's um there's a famous um saying in boxing i can't remember who i think it might have been sugar ray leonard or one of them famous guys that it's once you become a world champion it's very hard to get up and go to fight uh getting out of silk sheets like once you got all the money yeah you got all the fame like it's very hard to get up at five in the morning to go to the boxing gym and get punched in the head and train mm. to keep your title. Well, look at Conor McGregor, mate. They mm. can't get him in the ring. <laughs> yeah. Why would you want to? Yeah, well, why would you? Like you've got all the money in the world, mm. all the fame or whatever that's worth. Um, yeah, why do it? Yeah. And uh, I, get, I guess it's... The person, doesn't it? Yeah. Like if that but was it, your ultimate goal, that's fine, mate. No mm. one... No, not many of us ever make world champion. But yeah. You can rest easy. But that's why there's those elite, like the elite elite that have like five-time world champion or nine-time world. It's or just, Aaron Clyers. Yeah. It yeah. was a four straight or five straight? I think, I don't know, maybe five, but not. Might have missed one year or something. I don't yeah. know, but, mate, either way, the guy's a freak. <laughs> yeah. He's so good. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you ever travel with him much? Never traveled with him. I quite no. like the guy, though. Like, such yeah. a good bloke down to earth. Is he still radio? No, I haven't really seen a lot from him. I haven't him. seen nothing from him. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, it's probably pretty hard to get hold of out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah, probably working and... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who knows? Who would know? Well, he's... Um, He's had a, even at the age he is now, he's had a career that only people could dream of in Australia. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's, he's set the bar and I think it's mm. going to stay that high for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and even there could have, if stuff went different, it could have been six easily. Oh, yeah. Because there was what the, um, when Cody, Cody won, he only bet him by a few points. Like yeah, it was down to the line. Yeah, it was like the last yeah. ball and what, one was 88. Oh, no. He was 90 on um, that real pretty ball. Mystery. Word. Mystery, yeah. yeah. How cool was that? Yeah. <laughs> and then um, Cody Hefferton was 92 or 91 on Boogers Beach. Yep. Yeah. And then I think that was the difference. What a night of bull riding. <laughs> yeah, Holy that's right. Jesus Christ, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Those bulls are crazy. <laughs> so... Your next step is get healthy and then reassess. Reassess, mate. Yeah. yeah. It, it is a little harder now with the business. Like I, I feel like I have responsibilities, whereas mm. I didn't have any responsibilities when I was younger. Mm. So i got to be somewhat smart too. Like, I'd like to eventually get my own place and like I've got all the goals in the business and that mm. sort of stuff. But, yeah, it's tough when you just keep getting hurt time after yeah. time after <laughs> time. But I just mm. I can't let it go yet. Like, I just need need to finish on my terms. Yeah. Yeah. So get healthy, reassess. Is, is there any chance of seeing uh, Will's, Will Purcell's bull riding school coming up soon? Or Yeah, yeah. I, like, I'd be more than happy to. I, yeah. I love helping people. Yeah, I, I think you, you're a good role model. Like, I think oh, it'd be geez. good for someone to run a school, like, especially how, like, obviously you can't take that good a care of yourself injury-wise with, but everything outside of that's in your control, you've always. Mm. And maybe care maybe I'd be out by now if I didn't do all that other stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to be healthy, but yeah, no, I, I'd love to run <laughs> schools, mate. Like I don't think I'm the most achievable rider, but I know I tried to do things my way the whole time, especially technique wise, <laughs> and it 
that wasn't the best. Like I, I, I found out the hard way with most <laughs> things. So yeah. maybe I can help someone with maybe what not to do. Mm. But um, yeah, I reckon it'd be fun. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming on, Will, and uh, I'll see you next time. See you around like a wrist <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, bro. Cheers, bud.